again. Today I am reviewing the Caviar Black 2TB hard drive in a Rosewill RX358 enclosure. Now have a listen at how loud the hard drive is when it spins up. After about three hours of mostly idle time, meaning uh, mostly idle, barely active, uh, on this tabletop, uh, the fan being off, it has reached 59 degrees Celsius with the, uh, the smart, the internal sensor on the hard drive, 59 degrees Celsius. And the metal enclosure is nice and toasty, so it is dissipating heat well. But let's turn on the fan now, and in a few more hours, I will tell you how far the, f the uh, temperature has decreased. That's on. That's off. And after leaving the drive overnight with the fan on, being mostly idle, it has reached a temperature of about 38 degrees Celsius. Very nice and cool. In conclusion, this Western Digital 2TB Caviar Black is quite a performer. Um, first of all, it is a relabeled Caviar Black. It's actually it's something you would call a white box uh, or white label, but it's been rebranded Media Max, M E D I A M A X W L 2000 GSA 6472. And if you do a Google search on this, you're not going to find many results unfortunately and um, I do not know the warranty status of this if I get any warranty at all uh, I'm pretty sure I don't get a five-year warranty like the normal customers um, but I will let you know in an annotation right now on the YouTube video of what I find out about the warranty when I do okay so other than that it is it is the same drive it's just a different label um, let's see here first of all um, very fast performance does very does small transfers very quickly it can copy to itself 65 60 to 65 megabytes per second which equals 120 to 130 megabytes total transfer rate which which is you know equivalent to a sustained transfer rate on the outer edge so it's it utilizes its 64 megabyte cache very well it seeks very fast with its dual stage actuator um, let's see let me refer to my little notepad here um, I would yeah I would say that it is if you have like a 150 gigabyte Raptor this would uh, at least be as fast as it with with IO or close to it um, now with um, the cons um, the power consumption first of all uh, the drive takes 8 to 9 watts when idle and it takes up to 12 watts at full seek like just full back and forth from first track to last track uh, typically it would be somewhere between 8 to 11 watts 8 watts doing idle 8, eight to 9 as I said um, and I found this out through a kilowatt meter and I've discovered that the enclosure takes 5 watts with the fan on and so of course that means that the um, hard drive the whole setup takes about 14 watts when the hard drive is idle and up to 17 watts when it is seeking full bore uh, with this RX358 Rosewill enclosure. So it, the water jads up and to put this into perspective a caviar green three platter 
one terabyte. Uh, it takes about four watts idle instead of eight to nine. 5200 RPM versus 7200 RPM. It is much slower, and I don't like that. Um, I would take speed any day. I really don't care about a few more watts. Um, but t talking about watts, we should also talk about heat. This is in an all-metal enclosure as well. No fan. Um, and it only gets up to 41 degrees Celsius, uh, being vertical. Being flat gets a couple degrees higher. Not too bad. With this, being flat gets 59 degrees Celsius, 58 to 59 degrees Celsius. And the, th the thermal limit on the spec for this is 60, so bad idea, it, you know, no matter what the spec says. So with the fan, this enclosure brings it down to 38 degrees Celsius, very, very good cooling with this enclosure. So if you have a high performance 7200 RPM hard drive or higher, um, excluding the Velociraptors because they run quite cool, um, be sure to have a fan with a modern high performance drive in an external enclosure. Now, another gripe, um, uh, it's not really a gripe at all actually, uh, noise. I, I actually like the sound of it seeking, it, it seeks very quickly, it, it sounds, you know, like a beast. And people who are computer enthusiasts I think would like it. And you can turn on acoustic management and, and make this a lot quieter, just under the, the um, you know, the advanced drive settings. You can um, access acoustic management and turn it up and it will quiet itself down for you. Um, now, one one actual gripe that I have for this drive, the only gripe, is the buffering. Um, being in an external enclosure, you would like it to be as secure as possible so that no data would be lost if power is lost. But this greatly negative, negatively affects the performance of this drive. Um, when I shut off the Windows cache and the onboard buffer on this drive to, to eliminate data loss, um, performance goes completely to crap with small writes. Um, a couple, it's limited to one to three megabytes per second. Usually I get two megabytes per second when it's copying to itself small files and two and a half megabytes per second copying from my laptop's SSD through eSATA to this with small files writing to this. So there's some buffering issue here, some some latency issue. It might be just software, it might just be my computer, but judge for yourself. If you put this in an external enclosure, it might not do well if you decide to disable the onboard buffer and or disable the Windows uh, caching for this drive. Um, again, it might just be my setup. You should look online for more um, situations like this. Uh, that might just be me, but again, um, it should perform. It should theoretically perform quite well even without any any buffer at all because it has a very low latency with accessing and high high density. But uh, that's my only gripe. Other than that, this is a perfect drive. Runs hot, a little bit loud, but totally worth it. Totally worth it. I'm telling you, don't get a green. Get a caviar black if you care about performance. It's totally worth the. A little bit more heat and a little bit more noise. And that is my review. I hope you enjoyed it.